welcome to Life in Perspective. I am Brenda Palmer, your host, and I'm excited for today's guest. Like, I don't even know. We always struggle on what to call each other. It's giving sister, friend, mentee, I don't know, safe space for me at this point. But I have my good girl. Y'all gonna know her as Octavia Miller. Um, but I call her Tay. And Tay is in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I really just wanted to, I'm like trying to figure out the male, the female version of Paul. Get you know? out of here. Because you know, I'm really Timothy and you're really Paul. But like, maybe we'll give like Pauline. Paulina. 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 Okay, Paulina. And Tamisha. I don't like that. Tamisha. <laughs> like Tamisha. It's really Tamisha. giving urban dictionary version of the Bible. Y'all don't cancel me. I like black names. I just don't like people. No one gets kids to me. Safe space. We love that. Tay, what's up, Brenda? I was about to say you're like my first non LA throwback friend, but Randy, yeah. we had Randy on the podcast, yeah. but but he lives here now. He's like LA. He is LA. He was LA Randy when he was. He on was here, so definitely he really LA count. Randy. But um, Tay was a part of the young adult ministry. I was voluntold to lead. <laughs> yeah, Brenda um, was my pastor. Okay. All right, you you really helping this little pastor yeah. thing? I've been seeing it from the beginning. Okay, um, it is true, guys. It doesn't matter where I go, people will call me Pastor Brenda, and I will forever correct them and say I'm not a pastor. And I'm just Brenda. Pastor. Uh, Brenda whatever. Um, but yeah, y'all. Tay just graduated. I did with her master's in counseling psychology with a concentration in trauma and abuse. So wow. We can do hard things. We can do hard yes. things. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all a funny story about Tay, and maybe this will help break the ice for her a little bit. Okay, so Tay comes to visit me often in California, and um, I used to live in a place called Temecula. I was on staff at a church. So, you know, I'm choosing to introduce Tay to the pastor of the church. You know, we're outside on the patio having normal conversations, just talking, right? So, um... I, I tell him that Tay is a missionary because that is also what Tay does in addition to just finishing three years of school. Praise the Lord. Ooh. She's also a missionary, and she serves uh, a part of an organization called Impact. Yeah, the Impact Movement. The Impact Movement, yeah. and it's on college campuses it around is. the country. It is. Um, but she serves where she lives in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking my pastor would love to meet a missionary, you know. We love that. So, um... He starts talking to Tay. Now, the important part of this story is that my old pastor at that church, he is a Caucasian, a white male. Okay, that is important to the story. So I say, like, yeah, Tay's a missionary. You know, she's visiting, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, yeah, love that. He says, you know, where do you feel called to serve? Black people. She just, just tells the man of God, black people. Now, one thing you should know about Pastor John is he is a little socially awkward, all right? So he can barely take normal social interactions, but ones that get awkward, he doesn't know what to do with those. And neither do I. You know what I did? I walked away and let them have their conversation on their own. <laughs> and I was fine. I just I feel I'm she comfortable says, in my calling. Oh, I'm here to serve black people. He goes, oh, so anywhere from Kenya to Kansas. And then he goes, well... There's probably not a lot of black people in Kansas, right? But if they're there and they want to be met with the gospel, I will gladly go to Kansas. <laughs> yeah. I was so awkward. I was just like, but that is also Octavia. Like, I, I could probably take her anywhere and she is going to make me cringe at some point. Because Why, of the things. though? I just feel like, no, because don't make it like <laughs> I don't be out here purposely making people uncomfortable. I no, also you're just, just really. You're just being yourself. Yeah, just, just I love sure. working with black people. I think I felt like I, I think I've always been like this. Like I love, I love us. Um, I, I believe that God loves us. He does. And I feel called to us specifically, and I have no shame about that. And I also, I do love everyone. For sure. And if you really know me, you know that I have friends yeah, yeah. all over the place. Um, I think but it's the I same like, like somebody feeling like they're called to youth. Yeah. Or they're called to women. That's how I think about women. it. But some yeah. people do take offense. I think, I don't know if they take it. I think it caught him off guard. I think it just. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he was, like, he was, <laughs> was not prepared. He wasn't prepared. Which also I will say that I should stop doing that because I know sometimes <laughs> I can make white people uncomfortable. <laughs> And I know I did it in school all the time because everything I did, I tailored it towards black folk every single time. Yeah. 
Everyone learned that Octavia was here for the blacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's really giving Issa Rae. I'm rooting for everybody black. Yeah. Uh, we should call the episode Everybody Black. We shouldn't. I love, We love all people. Yeah, 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 um, no. And I feel called to all people, yeah. not just to Praise serve God, black people, yes. for sure. But I thought that was like really a funny story uh, because... I was I was uncomfortable, but in the best way. Like I love Pastor John. He he laughed it off, and he was just like, "Okay, all right, love that." And he will forever remember her as Octavia, the missionary called to black people. Yeah. So there it is. And I'm fine with being known by that. I love that. How does what? Okay, we have to go back because mm-hmm. obviously, if you got a master's, that means you went to undergrad. But why choose to become a missionary? Why I choose to become a missionary? So it's really not a long story. So I, I went to school, Ball State University in mm-hmm. a small town, Muncie, Indiana. Um, and I got there, and it was it was a culture shock for me. Like, I was living in the northwest suburbs of Chicago at that point. But small town Indiana, it's Lord, different. that PWI did a number on me. And I, I literally, I got a little radicalized there because I said, hey, God, I see <laughs> these Christians. Mm-hmm. I said, they love you, but they're missing out on a group of people and I don't like that. And this girl one day we were on our way to church and she was like, hey, I go to this Bible study with black people. That's all I needed. I really <laughs> didn't need much more than that. I said, I'm in there. Yeah. And I pulled up and two of the guys, one of them is like now my closest, one of my closest guy friends, they gave like a gospel presentation. And I was mm-hmm. like, look at these young men. And like, they love God. Yeah. Even now they love God. And in that moment, I was like, man, this is a community I want to be a part of. And so I like jumped right in and I started serving. Um, that was second semester of my freshman year. And I started serving in our leadership. Um, they were all graduating. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was so funny, like that we learned later was they were praying for God to like raise up leaders or to send people to join wow. that movement. Because if they graduated, it would have just dissipated. Mm-hmm. And so they challenged us to step into leadership. I don't know why they did that, but <laughs> I was like challenged to step up and like serve. And by the time I was graduating, I wrote down a prayer in my journal and I said, Lord, would you send staff to serve black students on this campus? That was like fall of my senior year. Mm-hmm. By spring, the Lord was like, you go do it. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God, I don't know about that. But in addition to that, we did a fast the that I feel like that whole year we were fasting, but we were like doing a fast and we're like on the prayer calls in the morning. And yeah. I remember one morning God with was connect. Like, mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. And I remember God sure. was like, "You go do this." Yeah. And I was like, "God, no," because there was a I wanted to do it, but in order to do it, I had to join staff with another organization mm-hmm. to serve that campus. And I was like, "God, I don't want to be the only." Like I I did my mm-hmm. part. I don't want to be the only. And this is why I say I love all people, and I have to throw that caveat in there because God was like, "Don't be selfish." Mm-hmm. Like I, I know what I've called you to, and like, but this is your way in. Yeah. And God used that, used me, used that team to um, help build black students, equip them with the gospel on that campus, and that's how I became a missionary. I just was like, "Hey, God, yeah. I'm gonna do whatever you want me to do," and I got my bachelor's in. Um, uh, psychology Mm -hmm. with a minor in interpersonal relations but I was not ready to go to grad school Mm -hmm. I was like I was worn out I was exhausted I was so afraid to like address my own story and to be a good therapist you need to do a good amount of work with yourself for sure I wasn't ready and I knew that I wasn't ready and so I was a hundred percent fine taking a break and so I just asked the Lord like what are we going to do and he actually used my three years at that campus serving those students specific to specifically to grow my heart for therapy and to do work with Mm -hmm. people and to journey through stories because as I sat with women sat with girls sat with my students and I heard them and we sat in scripture and we prayed we always prayed um I was like y'all need more Mm -hmm. more that I don't I can't give you right now but I can because it's in me I just need to go do the work so it can get Mm -hmm. pulled out of me and so he used that time to like grow me as a woman I was like on staff at a church like how (laughs) you were why are y'all like it was a very unique church Oh, hey, shout out to City Hope Muncie, okay? I love them. You know, if you're ever in the area, go check them out. I don't know why anyone would be there, but if you so happen to roll through. Somebody's going to be watching like, oh, my God, I go there. I hope so. Sure. And know that I love them. Mm-hmm. You know, I love y'all. But, yeah, God used that time in such crazy ways when I think about it because I'm like, it felt like I was just doing a lot of random stuff, mm-hmm. but God was, like, calling me out, and I was like, yeah. you, you can't hide. You can't. Even, like, sitting here right now is why I'm uncomfortable is because I like to hide in the mm. background and, like, support mm. the people, you know? Mm. And I just, when I have to it's go. It's not giving oh my. should be hidden. It's given should be set. The city on the hill 
Wow, 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 I think wow. that's what the word says. Yeah. So in a roundabout way, I said it wasn't going to be a long story. I gave the you gave you gave the, I gave but the story. what you said was really you said a lot of things. I love that you were praying a prayer that God made you then be the answer mm-hmm. to. And I think that happens to us a lot. It's like we wear we bear these things, these burdens essentially, and we're like, God, send somebody to do this. Or we usually we ain't even saying send somebody. We like, God, do this, mm-hmm. do this. And then he's like, Great, love that this is on your heart. Mm-hmm. Love that you carry a burden for it. Love that I'm developing a burden for it. Now go do it. Yeah. Go go be the thing that yeah. you've been praying for. Cause yeah. I've done all that I'm gonna do. Now it's on you. And then he also used that. Um, season to cultivate you and also help identify like okay here's the purpose of like why I created Tay and I really really love that I was sitting here my eyes was getting a little watery because I like I feel like I often say to myself like I don't know how I ended up doing this Mm -hmm. right and people do the pastor thing and that is at the core of being a pastor is about shepherding people but I feel like when I look at your life it's like (laughs) dang, like, God really trusted me to shepherd your life. Like, I can remember, like, ooh, don't you do that? Don't you do that? Don't you do that? <laughs> if anyone's going to cry, it's going to be me. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do, I, it's like, I mean, I don't have, like, natural children, but the way, like, my heart is moved, like, every time you accomplish something or – I see you journey through something and the way you articulate it. And I'm like, dang, I rem-. like God has allowed me to ride shotgun in your life, like to see the growth. And I'm like, man, I got to be a part of that. And it's almost like it's weird how your life and your growth reassures like God's calling on my life. Mm-hmm. Like I and I feel like <laughs> we talk all the time. <laughs> like is it's really a problem. Uh, it's not. It's, what it's not a problem, but it you know it's all right. I'll be like, if you don't answer the phone, I'm like, what could you possibly be doing Literally. that you couldn't answer the phone? I like, what is going on? Life. Don't let me be busy for <laughs> no, two days. I'm like, oh, so you you outside? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I feel like in this season is like God is allowing me to carry fruit mm-hmm. to remind myself, like in the moments where I'm like. Yeah. Or even doubting, like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Or, like, am I fulfilling this the way that God wants me to? And it's like, you're literally following me as I follow Christ. And I'm like, because I'm always, I'm like, we need, we have a discipleship problem. And I'm like, am I discipling somebody? You are. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I am. And I get to see it, like, often. Mm-hmm. And so your life and, like, how you journey and how you got in closer to Jesus is encouraging me, like, Cause I can remember. Yeah. We would walk through some things and I'm like, Hey, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, can't talk to them that way. I get that. Hey, let's reel that in. Let's talk about. And it's funny because our lives go like, I walk through something and overcome it. And here you come right behind me doing the same thing. And it's like, well, all right, let's do it. It's li- it literally never fails. It's so funny mm-hmm. like that. But I think, like, that was why I wanted you on the podcast. Like, because I think people need to see, like, I, when we talked about this earlier, but we overcomplicate discipleship. Mm-hmm. Because we didn't sit down and have a meeting and go to coffee and go, hey, I think I need you to disciple me. And then, because my next question would be, like, what are your, what is your expectations? Because yeah. I'm not going to meet them. You're not. But let me find out what they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and instead, it's just like we, you know, we attended the same church Mm -hmm. and then I was leading the young adult ministry. So it was kind of like that position or that role was already established in your life. But I also don't feel like because I know I'm discipling you, I don't feel this pressure of perfection. Mm -hmm. You know, like I live out my life in front of you, highs, lows, ups, downs, quitting, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like when I look at scripture and I see how Jesus related with the disciples. He understood discipleship and friendship. Mm-hmm. He understood it very well. And so I feel like it doesn't always have to be this, um, uh, what is it? Like, it doesn't have to be like this dominant, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like we start getting like power struggles and like, you need to follow me, you need to listen. Like, no, we, I'm just doing life and I'm, when it's bad, I'm telling you it's bad. And here's what I'm doing to navigate yeah. the bad. And I think it, there's this honesty that we have um, 
And I think that what I enjoy about whatever this is that the Lord has given <laughs> us is that um, you knew me before the world did. And that there's a safety in that that doesn't exist in other places. Because I'm like, well, like Tay knows Brenda, like that the world probably will never get to meet. But there is this, it's almost like a, like I can go be who I need to be in the world, but then there's like this place where I can come back to and go like, whoosh, let me just, yeah. let me just breathe, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's no expectation for me to be whatever people think I am. <laughs> and I, I need that more in this season than I ever would have known I needed yeah. it. Um, but I think that, that there is a, I don't know, there's like a piece there too. So yeah, I'm, I'm proud yeah. of you. I'm proud of the journey you've taken with the Lord. You haven't allowed the tough things that you've had to navigate, um, take you away from your faith. They've only like pushed you closer and you, you are not, bro, you could, you could be doing a whole lot <laughs> more other things you know well i really can't because the lord actually does not allow me to do he anything don't. and for even real. when you try he like girl <laughs> get your what are you even over there over doing? here this is not for you <laughs> yeah but i'm i'm really proud of what god's like doing in your life but like you haven't even scratched the surface and thank you for being my therapist as well <laughs> okay um, guys, but i'm don't now therapizing my friends don't say she that. does <laughs> but i ask her to because i be therapizing myself yes. and then i'm like Am I right about this? I be using terms and everything. I really could be a therapist, but I'm going to go and sit on someone's couch. I'm yeah, not going to sit on my own. No, honestly, like, I think it's an honor. I feel like I, there's moments where I, like, recognize what this is, and I'm like, dang, God, like, you really, because I think there's something really beautiful about yeah. being able to do life with somebody that inspires you. Like, I tell you so many times you how much I've that. been... <laughs> <laughs> inspired by your yeah, obedience, yeah. your surrender to the Lord, like I can point out moments of my walk where like seeing you has like fueled my faith to keep going. And so to like most people don't get to know the people that yeah, touch yeah. them in that way. And so I think also it's an honor not just to like be in relationship with you, but to be able to see mm -hmm. all facets of Brenda. For and sure. so when people are like, ah, oh, that's like why I that. also <laughs> love when people are like, hey, Brenda, I'm like, you need to hear the way that you've encouraged so many people. Like, I know you're like, I'm just, who do these people think I am? And I'm like, you are Brenda Latrice Palmer. Come on, you better put my you, whole government name. I already know, it's fine. <laughs> whole government, whole government. But it's who you are, and I'm <laughs> thankful that, like, even though, I wasn't joking when I said you were my pastor. I, like, I mean that, like, I wasn't at that church for real because I was in school. <laughs> and so I would come home Thanks and Lord. Lord. connect with be my community. For sure. You led that. You were my pastor. And so I'm thankful that I'm able to see you from that place where you're like, girl, shut up. I'm nobody's pastor. To like you having to walk <laughs> into in your pastoral grace, in your shepherding gift. And it's been so beautiful, <laughs> like from that church to Culture Shakers, which has now come alive, yeah, to yeah. now preaching all over the world. All of it is like, I, I think I'm able to honor you, but see you because I think I've been able to, by the Lord's grace, I've been able to see, see you yeah, as, yeah. as you and then as what God has called you to. And I don't know. I just think it's an honor. And I'm so thankful that you have seen the ghetto -ness. Cause there's moments <laughs> where I'm like, dang, I gotta tell Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> the little confession things be funny. I'm like, ha, I said, hey, amen. Mm, yeah. It's like, All right. Glad but it's got. been so, it's been good. Because I think you also do a really good job of being like, hey, you need to ask the Lord what's going on with your heart. <laughs> sure. Like, we need to get to the root of this. And I think sometimes when I think about accountability, that's not always a place that people go to. It's no, like, what do we need to do to stop this? And it's yeah, like, yeah. we actually need to get to the heart. Like, what's going yeah. on? Because there's probably some unbelief. There's probably some spaces sure. where you're not trusting God. And that's what we actually need to address. Because yeah. the act, or whatever it is. It's going to keep repeating keep itself, repeating. for mm -hmm. sure. And I think that's like that's for anybody. Like, if you keep finding yourself in cycles, you're like, oh my goodness, I, I try to stop this. I couldn't. Well, that's the first problem, is that you're trying to stop it. Come you're on. not allowing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to do a work on your heart. But you need to deal with the root of that. That's why when you come with stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm aware of not just who you are, but who God says that you are and this doesn't align with that yeah. so now what's going on let's let's get to the root of it mm -hmm. so we can stop the behavior the behavior is a fruit of something mm -hmm. and so i think for sure i think in in seeking accountability you want to be with you want someone to hold you accountable who knows you the way that god does 
Because sometimes if you have accountability from a person who ain't trying to grow, they ain't trying to hold you accountable mm -hmm. to the stuff they want to hold on to. So they're going to be like, girl, it ain't that bad. The Lord knows your heart. If you got a the Lord knows your heart friend, let let them ride. And like, can we just stop using that? Like, the Lord does the Lord know your Lord knows heart. your heart is even more reason why you need to get your life together. Why you need to be on your face in front of him. Because he know your ratchet, ugly heart. And he says that it is wicked deceitful. and deceitful. And y'all keep following. I'm just following my heart. Stop. It's going to lead you stop. right on to that place. Y'all know. Now we sending the people. We're not, we're not. I said it's gonna lead you there. I didn't send you there. It's gonna lead you there. <laughs> but nah, I, th I think that's I think that's real. I think Yeah, it's it, it's this discipleship relationship snuck up on us. Yeah. It wasn't for sure. like and I, I think that is the most beautiful thing about it. And also Emma, you were talking about this last night. She wanted to read me a four page letter of a dream that I don't know what happened last <laughs> night, but she definitely told me that I also have mm -hmm. discipled her. And that felt good because earlier somebody said, if you could just find two people in your life. And I think I probably have a group of people you absolutely do. Um, that I like pour into. And I get that question all the time. Like, can you disciple me? Can you mentor me? And I'm going to tell you no, because I'm going to tell you I don't have capacity for it. But apparently I do have a little bit of capacity in my natural life. They are a part of my actual community. So it's easier versus like, we don't have to set up things. They just happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, I love that. What are you looking forward to the most in this new season? You just graduated. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sometimes it can be stressful. But what yeah. are you looking forward to? I think what I'm looking forward to is to finally start bridging this call to, sh like, share the gospel and also this call to be a part of people's that people's lives as they journey through healing together mm -hmm. um like I think while I was in school I got to build an imagination around what it means for me to be a therapist and like how I understand God as a healer um and as our mighty counselor you know like we have these terms in scripture that describe God but I think I'm I've been able to cultivate some a type of framework around like what does it mean for God to be a healer and what does it mean for us to partner with him in that work um, and so I'm excited to discover what that looks like for me. I think mm -hmm. I'm learning that I cannot do this work apart from the Lord. And so I was like, I don't want to be a Christian therapist, but it's kind of looking like she's going to be a Christian therapist. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. Like, I think sure. I'm fine with that. I'm thankful to have, like, clinical, you know, like, experience and, like, get understanding in that way, but be able to partner that and marry that with the gospel and bring that to the church. I love the church. I'm a church kid. I'm always for rooting sure. for the church. Even when we ghetto, I'm like, no, this is the Lord's bride. He's going to make it beautiful, and we mm -hmm. are part of that. So I'm excited to kind of figure that out. The thing is, I don't really know. Like, I feel it's crazy because I think we talked about this before, but this is, like, the first time in my adult life where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Even though I got a master's degree, I can't say that I mastered anything. <laughs> I'm like, I did it. I completed the courses. I showed up, sure. wrote all the papers. But, like, the work itself, I'm like, I actually don't know. And I'm in a space, which is very common for most of my life, but just not in this particular way where I'm like, God, I don't, what do we, I see all the things that you're you're doing. I mm -hmm. feel the ways that you're growing me. I see the desires that I have and like what they're pointing towards, but I don't really know how to get, I don't know. Yeah. Um. And so I think part of me is excited about figuring that out with God and kind of, yeah, walking in a new type of experience of trusting him and, like, what does it look like to follow you here? Because everything else is, like, I knew I was going to that school. I knew mm -hmm. I was going to join staff. I knew I was going to move to Seattle to go. To, like, I knew all those things, and it was, like, the rest of the pieces were, like, God got it. Yeah. But this, I'm in a space where I'm, like, I actually just don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's exciting, and it, I think it's my fault because I say in Bible study all the time, like, the best place to be is a, a, a moment where you're dependent upon the Lord, mm -hmm. where, like, you don't have an answer. It's the best place to be because what better way to experience God than to be in a situation when you have nowhere else to go? Yep. Um, and so I think I talked it up on myself, and now I'm like, hey, God, where are we going next? But I'm excited. I think every journey with him is worth it, and so I'm mm -hmm. like, wherever we go, let's go. But I, like, I feel the, like, okay, these things are coming together. Like, I have some idea around it, and I don't know how – We'll live it out, but we'll get there. Yeah. Oh, say I'm so proud of you. Oh, bro. Ugh, Put a little baby. Put a little baby. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I think it's 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 getting to the place where you find the peace in the I don't know. 
and like I don't being, think I'm there yet though. I, was, I know I, I said was, that really beautifully, but I'm not no, there no, no. yet. You get there. Though. You get, and you might get there after you know a little bit, and then you're like, okay, go find peace in that. Mm -hmm. It's funny because growing up, like my aunts or my 